from Apple Valley News Now. First alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbreth. Good Thursday morning. We still have just the one fire that's burning in the viewing area. That would be the Williams Mine Fire burning to the south of Mount Adams in extreme southwestern Yakima County. We did get an acreage update with this one yesterday. It grew by two acres, not 200, two whole acres and still 31% contained. So, so not a lot of movement with this fire over the past day. And that's the only one we have burning in the region, at least the only significant one. Right now, temperatures are in the 40s and 50s, pretty similar to the temperatures that we saw just yesterday morning. Remember, in Sunnyside, we got pretty close to sinking down into the 30s. We're, we're going to cut it pretty close this morning as well, but all of us need some sort of jacket as you're headed out the front door. But into the late morning, it's going to be more t-shirt weather as we're going to have another seasonal day turning much hotter into Labor Day weekend and, and around then is when we do get some thunderstorm chances. So that will pose a fire start risk. But back to today, much warmer compared to yesterday. I'll tell you just how warm we're going to be for this Thursday coming up on Good Morning Northwest, which starts right now. Straight ahead on Good Morning Northwest, Mapton has been dealing with controversy ever since June when a city employee was accused of stealing $22,000. We'll get you caught up on all that's happened. Brian Koberger, the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students, is back in court this morning. We have the details on what today's court meeting will be discussing. Good Morning Northwest starts right now. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good Morning Northwest on your side. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica Jalal. And I'm Jill Sperling. It is Thursday, August 29th. Yes, we're getting closer to September. I've had to be reminding myself to drive a little slower through school zones because oh, yeah, because a lot of kids are back school. in school. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been chilly, but then it gets it's going to be warm again, and we'll get more information on that later from our chief meteorologist. But I'm kind of excited about the cooler temperatures and maybe back to a little bit of warm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but we'll start off with your top stories in Richland this morning. A Benton Franklin transit bus ended up crashing into a yard last night. This video comes to us from a viewer and you can see first responders on the scene and a bus off the road. This happened at Lee Boulevard and Thayer Avenue across from Carmichael Middle School just after 7 p.m. Few details have been released, but we'll have an update when we know more. Three people were taken to the hospital after a crash yesterday afternoon. Benton County Fire District 1 says this truck was found more than 50 feet off the road on Highway 397, just southeast of Kennewick. Airbags deployed as a result of the crash, and Washington State Patrol is investigating. None of the injuries were considered life-threatening. In crime news now from Grant County, Quincy residents were asked to shelter in place last night after law enforcement says two robbery suspects were knocking on doors. According to the sheriff's office, police were tracking the two suspects after they allegedly stole a vehicle, crashed it and then took off on foot. Shortly after 9 p.m., reports started coming in that the suspects were in the 800 block of Rocky Lane in Quincy, knocking on doors and asking for rides. The sheriff's office sent out a notice telling people to lock their doors. Both suspects were caught soon after and residents were told they could stop sheltering inside of their homes. Following up now on a homicide case out of Walla Walla, the 31 year old man accused of the crime was arraigned yesterday morning. Ramiro Ibarra was first arrested for allegedly assaulting his infant child back on August 15th, but on Tuesday police were notified that the infant succumbed to its injuries. Back in mid-August, major crimes detectives were called to both the hospital and home address to start the investigation and process the crime scene. These are pictures of the four-month-old where his family has set up a GoFundMe page. Walla Walla PD says Ibarra is now being charged with homicide by abuse, which is a Class A felony. The officers and the paramedics knew that this, was a, this wasn't just a choking baby like they typically respond to when babies aren't breathing. That this infant had been assaulted or there was significant trauma. I would even venture to say this is uncommon for even larger cities. Um, I just don't think we hear about this regularly that four month old you know, infants are essentially murdered. If you would like to donate to the family, they have set up a GoFundMe page. It's called Baby Ramiro's Fight and you can find that link on our website. You can stay with us for continuing coverage. 
The man accused of killing four University of Idaho students in 2022 will be back in court this morning for one of the most consequential hearings in this case to date. Brian Koberger's attorney will try to convince the judge to move the trial to Ada County, while prosecutors will try to convince the judge to keep the trial in Moscow. Koberger's lead attorney, Ann Taylor, is adamant that an impartial jury does not exist in Moscow. She also says relentless media coverage has corrupted the integrity of the case. A Richland man is indicted on 10 counts of conspiracy, fraud and aggravated identity theft. Gilbert Orozco is accused of working with others in an effort to get personal information of other people and use it to apply for COVID funding from the government. The U.S. Attorney's Office says Orozco stole over $300,000 from the government by using the identities of others. The city of Mapton has been the subject of controversy since June when a city employee was accused of stealing $22,000 in checks and cash in a fake robbery scheme. But more concerns coming to light over the past few months. Apple Valley News Now's Emily Goodell has a breakdown of what's happened so far and an update on efforts to remove her from office. A Yakima County Superior Court judge agreed this week to allow a second petition against the Mabton mayor, one filed by a resident, to move forward. But council members now tell me that the mayor has filed an appeal in the first petition, which was signed by the council members themselves. Mayor Rachel Ruelas has admitted in court that the city has been operating without a budget for all of 2024. I'm really cautious about how we spend the money, so we're not spending anything equipment, you know, that is not needed. The mayor telling the judge the budget will be finished in two weeks. Meanwhile, the council left making decisions without knowing how much money they have in the bank. But they now have access to new legal counsel after firing the previous city attorney, despite the mayor's refusal to sign the new contract. We were employed um, by, uh, by the city council at the last city meeting, which was two weeks ago. And so as a result of that, the, the mayor has, or the mayor pro tem signed off on the contract to employ us. So we're acting as de facto city attorney at this point. Uh, the city uh, will ratify the contract at the next meeting. But still no information released about how the city's dealing with the loss of $22,000. Whether they've put the employee accused in the fake robbery scheme on administrative leave or launched an internal investigation. Nobody knows anything. We don't have a chief no more, so who's investigating this? We're not going to talk about that right now, I'm sorry. I've tried to reach the mayor by phone, email, and in person at City Hall, in yeah, council sure chambers, and at the courthouse. But so far, the mayor has refused no, to speak no. with me about the city's response to the missing money, the recall petitions against her, or the fact that they continue to operate without a budget. It's left the community with more questions than answers, but we'll continue to push for those answers moving forward. Reporting from the Yakima Newsroom, Emily Goodell, Apple Valley News Now. In Pasco, the fire department was called out to a mobile home fire off of Flamingo Street yesterday morning. Firefighters say one home had significant damage, but crews were mopping up after about 30 minutes and no injuries were reported. The investigation into how the fire started is now underway. The Benton Franklin Health District has sent out a community survey for residents impacted by the Lineage Fire. The survey is in response to concerns raised by residents at the Lineage Logistics Fire Town Hall meeting held in Finley back in May. Officials say the purpose is to gather essential data on the health impacts experienced by those living within a one mile radius of the Lineage Logistics Warehouse. But there is that kind of immediate group that is still struggling with well water issues. You know, we still got well waters testing for E. coli, which means, you know, they can't bathe, they can't drink water, they can't water their livestock. You know, we've got a couple houses that are struggling with septic issues. You know, it's still a really imminent threat and an issue for them, you know, which is concerning to us, but as well as on a personal level. Like, if you can't get drinking water, that's a huge issue every single day for you. The survey was mailed in an envelope that should be easy to recognize, featuring red, white, and blue colors with lineage response displayed across the top. The county is asking residents to complete and return the survey by August 30th, and the survey should take approximately 15 minutes. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, almost 100 people died of an overdose last year in Yakima, and a treatment center is holding an event to bring awareness to the issue. Details coming up. Plus, Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbreth will have your weather forecast. Good Morning Northwest will be right back. Phones were made to help us connect, and somehow they've made us less connected. Which is ironic, 
Don't you think? We try to put our phones down, but we need to pick them up to see the menu. We can't watch something without also watching something else. Ironic. 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 But look, here's a phone company who wants you to use your phone less. That's ironic. Yeah, but in a good way. Let's find us again with Us Mode. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. Traffic jam. Ugh. And I'm already late. No matter what roads lead you home, McCurley Mazda is about to make your journey even better. Whether it's cruising riverside highways, winding vineyard trails, or anywhere else your travels take you, now is the perfect time to upgrade your way home. Visit McCurley in the Pasco Autoplex today for this special offer. Find your way home in a new 2024 Mazda with 0% financing from McCurley Mazda. Shopping online for a purple mattress? We get it. With Purple's unique gel flex grid and multiple foam layers, you'll experience effortless sleep. It's motion adaptive, temperature balanced, pressure relieving, and ultra supportive. But which Purple mattress is right for you? Come to Denver Mattress and test for yourself. During Purple's Labor Day sale, save up to $1,000 on mattress and base bundles and get an instant gift. Shop Purple at Denver Mattress, the easiest way to find your perfect purple. At Columbia Basin Buildings and Sheds, we are having our summertime sales event. Discover our wide variety of buildings, including custom build options to fit your unique needs. From now until the end of the month, get 20% off all our in-stock inventory. That's right. We offer free and fast delivery, and we're committed to unbeatable quality and service. Come visit Columbia Basin Building and Sheds in West Richland and Sunnyside for the best deals of the season. best bulls in the world have come to town. For bulls and their riders, those eight seconds go by in a heartbeat. Eight seconds to become a champion or nothing. Time to make some balls and welcome the best bull riders in the world! This is America, and this is PBR. It's bull time, Kennewick. PBR bucks into Toyota Center September 6th and 7th. Get your tickets now at PBR.com slash tickets or Ticketmaster. This newscast, sponsored by Mariano Morales Law. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbert. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Air quality is pretty good for this morning. We do have a little bit of light haze in portions of Benton and Franklin County from some of the controlled burns that were happening there just yesterday. Let's show you what happens to all that smoke throughout today and tomorrow as we put this into motion around 5 p.m. You can see some light haze in portions of the foothills also for the Blue Mountains and getting a little bit into the lower Columbia Basin as well. And then into midnight, looks like most of that should go by the wayside. And then into Friday, could have some more smoke around the peripheral of or around the periphery of our viewing area, but all that's going to end up being pretty light stuff. I'm thinking for today and tomorrow air quality will not be that big of a concern at all. Here's your co-cast for today for the Tri-Cities. Light jacket stuff, obviously, for this morning. Maybe holding on to the jacket into the mid to late morning. But by the late, late morning into the afternoon, it's certainly going to be T-shirt weather. It's going to be much warmer as opposed to yesterday. So for today, we'll be in the 80s. This is seasonal. Remember, yesterday we were about 10 degrees below average for this time of the year. So back to more seasonal stuff. Mostly sunny skies can could have a little bit of that light haze that we were just touching on. But these numbers are about to go way up, especially as we head into Labor Day weekend. So I'll tell you just how hot we turn. Also, I'll show you these little thunderstorm chances in the forecast and all that's going to be coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. In your health headlines this morning, Yakima's Triumph Treatment Center is holding its 8th annual International Overdose Awareness Day event this Friday. Organizers say 96 people died of an overdose last year in Yakima County. This event features speakers who have experienced overdose, lost friends and family, or who are working to help save lives. Plus nearly 30 community resources for those seeking help and a memory wall where people can include pictures of loved ones lost to overdose many more hundreds of people experienced overdose and didn't pass from that, but the problem is overwhelming and it's affecting our families and our children and our communities as well as our first responders. The event is free and will be from 10 to 2 tomorrow at Sarge Hubbard Park. There will also be coffee, donuts, ice cream and a Remembrance Rock painting activity. 
Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, a small business workshop was held locally helping connect employers and those looking for a job. And we have details on the event and when you can check out the next one. That's all coming up. Enjoy bowling here at Triple Play, where fun is always in season. French fries are fun, which is always in season here at Triple Play. Speaking of fun, did you know it's always in season at Triple Play? Dude, what's with dropping the tagline? The marketing ladies wanted me to push it. What did they offer you? Five pizzas. Gonna share, right? Of course. Triple Play has fun attractions for everyone, including go-karts, mini golf, and many more, all attached to a cozy hotel. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Labor Day is finally here. It's our biggest savings event of the year, and you'll find huge savings on our newest fall arrivals for every room in your home. During the Labor Day event, you'll get a full 60 months to pay with absolutely no interest and no money down. Or for cash purchases, we'll subtract the tax. Join us this Labor Day weekend with special hours Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Hurry in to your local Moore Furniture showroom for the best selection. Life can be hard. With Culligan, your water doesn't have to be. Drive into summer with a new Honda Accord Hybrid, CRV Hybrid, or the all new Civic Hybrid. Take a vacation, staycation, or just a weekend drive with the windows down. Whatever you do, make it epic with Honda. The 2024 Kelly Blue Books KBB.com best overall EV and hybrid brand. So act now. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into the Honda Summer Event. Apple Valley News Now is giving away family four packs of tickets to the final Saturday night Dust Devils game of the season as our Devils take on Hillsboro September 7th, followed by fireworks. And are on our mobile app or click on contests at AppleValleyNewsNow.com. When Apple Valley News Now first alert weather forecasted weekend thunderstorms. We're going to see some heavy showers. Especially in Yakima and Kittitas County. Viewers told us that their phone weather apps didn't mention them. Weather apps show no rain or thunderstorms in Sunnyside, Yakima area. The weather app says nothing but sunshine. Who do I listen to? That Saturday was one of the biggest days of thunderstorms we've seen in recent memory. Trust the Apple Valley News Now first alert weather team to get it right. Unlike weather apps, we're local and on your side. An awesome water skiing adventure. Fly the Northwest, Tuesday at 6. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbert. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Right now you're taking a live look at the Columbia River. This view coming courtesy of the Legends Casino and Hotel. A little bit of light haze up in the sky for this morning. The air quality should be pretty good right now. Temperatures mostly in the 40s and 50s. 51 for Walla Walla, 45 for Tri-Cities, 42 for Sunnyside. All of us need some sort of jacket as you're headed out the front door this morning. But a little bit later today, temperatures in the 80s. It's going to be a return to more seasonal weather across the viewing area. Plenty of sunshine, a little bit of light haze like you just saw on the camera and parts of the basin, also for parts of the foothills and for the Blue Mountains. For tonight, again, air quality should still be pretty good. Skies should still be pretty clear. Overnight lows dropping off into the 50s, so maybe just a little bit milder compared to what we're experiencing for this morning. So today's going to be seasonal and it, it's going to be the coolest day we're going to have over the next seven days as we'll, at least in the Tri-Cities, we'll be in the 90s from Friday through Wednesday with highs likely peaking around 100 for Sunday. That's going to place us at about 10 to 15 degrees above average for this time of the year. A little bit cooler by the time we get to Labor Day proper, but still, this is this is pretty toasty stuff. And then you factor in some of these little lightning chances that we're going to have for Monday and Tuesday, specifically for the Blue Mountains. And you think about all that hot and dry weather we're going to have in the lead up to these days, our vegetation is going to look pretty dry. And so there will be that fire start potential and we'll touch more on that a little bit later in the show. Here's a seven day forecast for the Tri-Cities. We'll be sunny and seasonal with light haze for today, maybe warming up to around 100 by Sunday. Then for Yakima, our last day of 80s for a while is gonna be for today in the mid 90s as we head into the Labor Day weekend.
For Ellensburg, we'll also see mid-90s for the weekend, breezy with very dry vegetation for Monday and Tuesday. And then for Hermiston, light haze drifting in today with sunny and seasonal weather otherwise. Very toasty for Saturday and Sunday, but cooler by Labor Day. And then for Walla Walla, highs climbing into the mid-90s for the holiday weekend, back into the 80s by Tuesday with that small shower chance. Thank you, Josh. United Airlines flight attendants could be walking off the job after an overwhelming majority voted yesterday to authorize a strike. That's if their contract negotiations continue to hit a dead end through November. The Association of Flight Attendants say the move to vote on a strike was fueled by United's lack of negotiating in good faith. The union members have been working with an amended contract that expired in 2021. The flight attendants want a pay increase as well as pay upgrades for schedule flexibility, on-ground duties, and retroactive pay. WorkSource Columbia Basin hosted a small business workshop yesterday. WorkSource provides a connection between job seekers and employers. The bilingual learning session discussed information from starting a business to hiring employees. Presenters also discussed small business resources like the Community Reinvestment Fund, which allows, which allows WorkSource to offer tailored resources to established businesses work experience on the job training, or if you're a business and need assistance with any type of training related to your industry, we can pay for those trainings. If you need equipment related to your industry, we can purchase those equipment. Workshops are open to the public. The next small business workshop will be on September 7th at the Tri-Cities Visitor Center. A schedule of future workshops can be found at WorksourceWA.com. Ford Motor Company is the latest American company to scale back on its diversity, equity and inclusion efforts. The automobile manufacturer told employees in a memo yesterday, Ford said it will no longer participate in an annual survey for an LGBTQ advocacy group. It will also not use quotas for minority dealerships and suppliers. According to an email shared with employees, Ford CEO said the external and legal environment related to political and social issues continues to evolve. Ford's move follows announcements from several other companies which have also made changes to their own DEI policies. And entertainment news is coming up. We'll have that next. Get to Mercedes-Benz of Yakima or call us and we'll pick up your trade and deliver your new Mercedes right to you during the Power of Choice sale at Mercedes-Benz of Yakima or stevehahn.com. Dare to go deep into the woods and uncover cash? Yep, at Legends Casino Hotel during our Cash in the Woods Thursday drawings, where four winners will gather between $4,000 and $10,000. Use your Legends Rewards card when playing in our forest of friendly slot machines to earn entries, and you could win your share of $112,000. No Big Bad Wolf, Walking Dead, or Sasquatch to fear in our woods, so come play, have fun, and who knows, you might just walk out of our woods with a backpack full of cash. This summer, turn moments into lifelong memories with Broadmoor RV. Feel the thrill of adventure and the warmth of togetherness. Explore the great outdoors with the comfort of home and let every adventure become a story worth sharing. Broadmoor RV, we make camping fun. I've always had an eye for opportunity. As a kid, I was hustling, selling candy, mowing lawns, you name it. That drive never left me. The first time I tasted crumble, it was clear to me this was more than just a cookie. From that moment, I knew this was a chance to bring the taste of something new to our neighborhood. But I couldn't do it alone. That's where Happo came in. With their support, I was able to secure the loan that brought crumble to our community. Where do you credit union? The biggest mattress event of the year is on now at More Furniture. Right now, it's the perfect opportunity to get that Tempur-Pedic you've been eyeing. We'll make it easy. During our Labor Day event, get 72 months interest-free financing with 72 equal monthly payments, absolutely no interest and no money down. And we'll provide white glove delivery and removal of your old mattress absolutely free. Visit your local showroom or shop all Labor Day specials online at morefurniture.com. 
Get to Mercedes-Benz of Yakima or call us and we'll pick up your trade and deliver your new Mercedes right to you during the Power of Choice sale at Mercedes-Benz of Yakima or SteveHahn.com. Get ready for the Seattle Kraken all season on Apple Valley News Now. Welcome back in entertainment news. Colin Farrell has launched a foundation in honor of his son, James, who has a rare neurogenic, neurogenitive uh, disorder called Angelman syndrome. His son is now 20, but he was diagnosed as a child. Farrell opened up about his son's condition for the first time, saying his son is nonverbal and receives live-in care. The Colin Farrell Foundation will support families who have adult children living with intellectual disabilities. The foundation will focus particularly on people who are aging out of special needs support systems. Well, the host of the 82nd Annual Golden Globe Awards has been announced, and it is comedian and actress Nikki Glaser. She's the latest in a long line of comedians to host the awards, which honors the best in film and television. And that list includes Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, Jimmy Fallon, and many more. And Glaser's resume includes two cable comedy specials and being the host of a podcast and reality TV show. She also hosted The Roast of Tom Brady that aired on Netflix earlier this year. The Golden Globes air on January 5th. I think I saw some of those, um, some of the highlights from that roast. I don't Would think you I've guys seen do it. a roast, like for yourselves? Or oh, I thought one? you were going to ask us to roast you. No, no, we well, don't we need to do, do that. that. No, I get that enough. How about the opposite of a roast? A nice. Oh. Everyone sits on the dais and just says nice things. Yeah, okay, I like that. Love Josh's yeah. weather forecast. There we go. <laughs> That's right. We're coming up next on Good Morning Northwest at 6:30. There are changes for RSD students when it comes to cell phone use in classrooms. We have an in-depth look at what the new rules are and how students are feeling about it. Plus, Russia has released a list of almost 100 people, mostly journalists, who are banned from entering the country. Details in the next half hour. Stay with us. When looking for a pediatrician, find out if the doctor takes your insurance. Then see if they're a good fit by visiting. More at applevalleynewsnow.com. Sponsored locally by Prosser Memorial Health. Learn more at prosserhealth.org. This is how we care. David, did you remember to get me an anniversary present? Anniversary? Of course, it's Mattress Depot USA's anniversary, and we're having a gigantic sale. Take advantage of our best prices of the year. And interest-free financing. David, you do know anniversaries only come once a year, right? Yes, and if you miss ours, you'll, you'll be, be sorry. sorry. Low prices every day, Mattress Depot USA. No Labor Day weekend plans? Whitman Hill Winery has you covered. Close out August on Whitman Pond Concert Series with a free performance from Gretchen Yanover on August 31st at 6.30 p.m. Enjoy wine tasting, street tacos from Tacos Don Cheo, and the traveling book bus store from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Space is limited. Reserve your spot with a free ticket on WhitmanHillWine.com. Hope to see you there. This summer, turn moments into lifelong memories with Broadmoor RV. Feel the thrill of adventure and the warmth of togetherness. Explore the great outdoors with the comfort of home and let every adventure become a story worth sharing. Broadmoor RV, we make camping fun. There. Are you ready to quacker size? It's the best exercise to get ready for the duck race. I know you guys are ready. Are you? It's coming September 14th. Don't miss your chance to win big at the Mid Columbia Duck Race. The grand prize is a 2024 Toyota Corolla Cross, plus other fantastic prizes. Support your community, lend a hand, buy a duck, and keep the tradition alive. The Mid Columbia Duck Race, presented by Toyota and Audubon Auto Care Center. It's time to get moving with the stunningly versatile Fast in Class 2025 Carnival MPV that seats eight from Overturf Kia. Plus, get 6.9% interest for up to 72 months. Shop online anytime at OverturfKia.com. That's OverturfKia.com. Overturf Kia at the base of the Blue Bridge in Kennewick. 
Thank you for making Apple Valley News Now's Good Morning Northwest the most watched local morning news program in our area. What's new, what's now, and what's next? Plus, first alert weather every 10 minutes. Wake up with Good Morning Northwest from Apple Valley News Now on your side. Good Morning Northwest streams all day at applevalleynewsnow.com and our mobile apps. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good Morning Northwest on your side. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica Jalal. I'm Jill Sperling. And I'm Josh Colbert. All right, Josh, it is getting warmer. Are we going to have warm temperatures for Labor Day weekend? Yes. you have any plans, anyone? I don't. No. <laughs> we'll be here plans, on Labor Day. Yeah. yeah. That's first weekend of college football. I'm excited about that. Oh, that's that. your plan. Ah, there you go. Fantasy day football week. for you? What's do that? You do fantasy football? No, that's, oh, okay. I, yeah, I'm from the Southeast, I like college football. Uh, I think yes. fantasy football goes against the spirit of the game. But anyway, <laughs> we'll, let's take that discussion for another time. Right now you're taking a live look at the Columbia River. This view coming courtesy of the Legends Casino and Hotel. Again, a little bit of light haze up in the sky for this morning. The air quality should be pretty good. Temperatures are in the 40s and 50s, low 50s right now for some portions of the foothills, but it looks like the rest of us are in the 40s. So definitely some jacket weather as you're headed out the front door. A little bit later today, it's going to be t-shirt weather. Temperatures in the 80s. Remember yesterday, we were about 10 degrees below average for this time of the year, but today we're going to be seasonal as, again, all of us will be in the 80s. Plenty of sunshine, a little bit of light haze for the basin and for the foothills and for the blues, but air quality not going to be that big of a factor. As we head into the weekend, these temperatures go up and the vegetation is going to get much drier. Also, there's going to be a little bit of lightning in the forecast, so that is a bad combo, and I'll show you some of the metrics to back all that up. That's going to be coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. As students head back to the classroom, there are some changes for Richland students. At a meeting earlier this week, the Richland School Board spent the night talking about cell phone usage as four RSD schools have taken on the challenge of banning phones. At the high schools, it's just during class times, but at the middle schools, there are no phones from the first bell to the last. Riley Fitzgerald says the policy is leaving some students feeling apprehensive. I was a little less excited when I first heard about it. I was like, oh, like I can't text my friends, I can't text my family. Perspectives, however, can change. The research shows that not just learning improves, but mental health improves with these policies. Especially hearing like during the meeting about mental health, like I'm such a big advocate for mental health and stuff like that, and I didn't, that didn't even cross my mind. Sheila Deckerty is a senior at Richland High. She says walking into RHS on the first day of school, there was concern, confusion, and a little bit of stress. The thing is, these high schools have always had a phone ban like this. High schools are implementing current policy, actually. I don't think that's a policy change. They're just enforcing what the policy already is. The new push is about enforcement and consistency. I feel like we need to be specific about how we're going to be consistent from school to school, how we're going to enforce it. While it's just during class times that phones aren't allowed at the high schools, it's more at the two middle schools, Carmichael and Enterprise. They have taken a big step. They, they went big or go home. Um, so it's going to be really interesting and, and I'm excited about it because the high schools who have started to dabble in a little bit, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a bigger process because we have more kids. It has the ability to show the board um, the pros and cons of both. I personally, and I'm only one board member, would like to see absolutely no cell phones in our schools from the time the bell rings in the morning until the bell rings in the afternoon. This meeting was just about discussion to potentially enact district-wide policy at a later time. It's not like I don't want my phone. Like, obviously, I want to use my phone. But just coming from it at a, like, logistical standpoint, it's going to be a lot more beneficial. And I think... With anything, it just takes time. The process moving forward is going to be about looking at the results from these four schools and then opening the floor to public comment. In Richland, I'm Riley Fitzgerald with Apple Valley News Now. Some board members also say they see a phone problem in the elementary schools. Policy in the future may also include grade school students in that potential phone ban. Now to another topic discussed at the board meeting, progress on construction throughout the Richland School District. The district is doing construction at 11 schools, all focused on safety and security. This follows the capital projects levy passed by RSD voters in February 2023. 
our um, construction crews have been working evenings and weekends in preparation uh, for student arrivals today. Coming up later this week, we head to one of those construction sites to see some of the progress at the Richland schools. Riley Fitzgerald will have that story as well. Covering Russia just got harder for some American media outlets. Moscow has uh, issued a list of 92 people it says the country is permanently closed to. It includes journalists from CNN and the editor-in-chief of the Wall Street Journal. Also on the list are officials from the Justice Department, Treasury Department, Space Force and professors from some American universities. The Russian Foreign Ministry says the bans are due to, quote, the Russophobic course pursued by the Biden administration. Now, the step isn't unprecedented. Last year, Moscow banned 500 Americans, including former President Barack Obama and late night TV host Stephen Colbert. Making a difference, Driscoll's is offering a $100,000 matching fund a challenge to help build the new Boys and Girls Club in Prosser. The Fresh Berry Company is matching up to $100,000 of all community donations made toward the funding the construction between now and September 30th of this year. This is now a step closer to having a new clubhouse for the Prosser community, and the clubhouse will be able to serve more than 200 youth members each day, doubling its current capacity. Lots of more space for our kids, so more kids are able to attend. Um, we're going to have a STEM room and an art room and learning center to help with homework. Um, an actual inside multi-purpose area for, as an activity center for like a gym. Um, and so it'll be good for the kids to be able to be inside on those days when we it's horrible weather outside. The new clubhouse is projected to cost $6 million and is expected to open in early 2025. Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, an environmental group is calling for an investigation into Robert F. Kennedy Jr. This over a story about a dead whale from 2012. Details are coming up. But first, Chief Meteorologist Josh Culberth will have your weather forecast. We'll be right back. An awesome water skiing adventure. Fly the Northwest, Tuesday at 6. Craving our world-famous hand-rolled crisp burritos with creamy, bacony, chipotle, smoky goodness? Try our new smoky pork crisp burrito for a limited time. When you know what you want, anytime is taco time. From Apple Valley News Now, this is Medically Speaking. If Tommy Kells pays me to do the in-home, I guess, nursing or the things I do to help out, so we don't need a nurse. Meds, cooking, cleaning, getting him to doctor's appointments picking up prescriptions, whatever else needs to be done. So at least once a month or whenever I need her, Sarah or whatever nurse is available comes to our house. If I have a worry that I'm not sure if he needs to go to the doctor, she comes and advises me and does an assessment and tells me if there's anything I need to do different or I don't know that I could do this without him. So we'll definitely evaluate their past employment. As a registered nurse myself, I'll look through their medical records and I'll look to see maybe what medical conditions they have and we'll be very upfront with them, honest about whether they do have a claim that could warrant benefits or not. No Labor Day weekend plans? Whitman Hill Winery has you covered. Close out August on Whitman Pond Concert Series with a free performance from Gretchen Yanover on August 31st at 6.30 p.m. Enjoy wine tasting, street tacos from Tacos Don Cheo, and the traveling book bus store from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Space is limited. Reserve your spot with a free ticket on WhitmanHillWine.com. Hope to see you there. Power your adventures with the all-electric 2024 Subaru Solterra. It comes with legendary Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive, standard, plus a rugged 8.3 inches of ground clearance. Everything about the Subaru Solterra is advanced, including the technology keeping you and your passengers safe. Love is now electric. Find your way home in a new Subaru Solterra from McCurley Subaru during the Subaru A Lot to Love event. Craving our world-famous hand-rolled crisp burritos with creamy, bacony, chipotle, smoky goodness? Try our new smoky pork crisp burrito for a limited time. When you know what you want, anytime is taco time. It's the all-new Apple Valley News Now weekend. With local news, regional news, first alert weather, and much more every Saturday and Sunday, including a complete wrap-up Sunday night at 11. 
Apple Valley News Now weekend. From Apple Valley News Now, always on your side. Don't give a rat's behind that below. A new era begins. And I'm just getting started. Judy Justice. See the premiere of Judy Justice, Monday, September 9th at 3. Followed by news and Monday Night Football. Only on Apple Valley News Now. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colberth. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Right now we have temperatures that are in the 30s, 40s, and 50s in Kittitas County. 37 right now for Cleallum, 43 for Ellensburg, so quite chilly there. In the 40s and 50s for the Yakima Valley, 43 for Grandview, 48 for Union Gap, 42 for Yakima, and then for the lower Columbia Basin, all of us in the 40s, so pretty uniform in that regard. And then for the foothills of the Blues, 40s and 50s, but in the Blue Mountains in, in Meacham and Ukiah, we're in the 20s and 30s, so some of us are quite brisk for this morning. A little bit later today, though, we're going to see the return of the heat, or at the very least, it's going to be very warm, as most of us will be in the 80s. It'll be seasonal. Yesterday was 10 degrees below average. Today will be the return to that more typical late August-like weather. We'll be even hotter as we head into the weekend, and that's going to intertwine with some little thunderstorm chances, also some breezes in the forecast. So I did want to show you how dry the vegetation is going to be. Remember that the 100th percentile will be the driest vegetation on records. So we're going to be into the 86th percentile for Kittitas and Yakima County with some breezes in the forecast. No breezes in the forecast as of now for the lower Columbia Basin where we'll be up into the 77th percentile, but into the 86th percentile for the Blue Mountains where there is some lightning in the forecast. So this is the region I'm probably the most concerned about when it comes to the fire star potential for Labor Day. And the reason why our vegetation is getting so dry again is because we're going to trend so hot into the weekend. I'll tell you just how hot we're going to get coming up in a few minutes. An environmental group is calling for an investigation into a recently resurfaced fish tale about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Kennedy's daughter Kathleen shared the story with the magazine in 2012. She talked about how her dad used a chainsaw to cut off the head of a dead whale that washed up on the shore of their family's home in Massachusetts. She says he then drove the whale head back to their New York home on the roof of the family's minivan. And this next detail is not for the faint of heart. She said every time they accelerated, quote, whale juice poured into the windows. The story appeared to resurface on social media last week. The Center for Biological Diversity Action Fund is calling on the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to investigate whether RFK Jr. broke any federal laws that protect wildlife. The fund believes Kennedy's actions may have jeopardized an opportunity for scientific research. In other environment news, $100 million is going to the National Park Foundation. The National Park Foundation says this grant is the largest it's ever received, as well as the largest to benefit America's 430 national park sites. The foundation says the money comes at a pivotal time, as there have been challenges in protecting the parks. Grant funding will target a handful of key priorities, such as critical initiatives to help protect fragile ecosystems and wildlife, and upgrades to parks to accommodate growing numbers of visitors. This grant adds to the Foundation's ongoing $1 billion fundraising campaign. Still ahead on Good Morning Northwest, new details on the assassination attempt of Donald Trump, what the FBI is saying it found in the suspect's search history and his car. But first, Chief Meteorologist Josh Culberth will have your full weather forecast. We'll be right back. If there's one thing we like, it's choices. And your Ford dealer is the place to start. Get power and capability with gas, hybrid, or all electric. But more important than the power you choose is what you choose to do with it. Save now with Cascade Farm and Outdoors' latest mailer. Watch for it in your mailbox or pick up a copy in store. It's the perfect time to get the perfect pair of jeans. Save now on women's premium jeans. Stock up on Golden Fire or Lignetics 40-pound stove fuel pellets. Plus, compare and save on Neutrina NatureWise 40-pound layer feed crumbles or pellets on sale now. Reap big savings store-wide with our latest mailer at Cascade Farm and Outdoor. Northwest. Homegrown. Honest values. No matter what roads lead you home, McCurley Mazda is about to make your journey even better. Whether it's cruising riverside highways, winding vineyard trails, or anywhere else your travels take you, now is the perfect time to upgrade your way home. Visit McCurley in the Pasco Autoplex today for this special offer. 
Find your way home in a new 2024 Mazda with 0% financing from McCurley Mazda. Labor Day is finally here. It's our biggest savings event of the year, and you'll find huge savings on our newest fall arrivals for every room in your home. During the Labor Day event, you'll get a full 60 months to pay with absolutely no interest and no money down. Or for cash purchases, we'll subtract the tax. Join us this Labor Day weekend with special hours Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Hurry in to your local Moore Furniture showroom for the best selection. We know what you want in a chainsaw. Husqvarna Chainsaws deliver the performance, comfort, and precision cutting you need to get the job done quickly and safely. Gas or battery powered, it's what precision cutting is all about. And for every job in any environment, your Husqvarna dealer has a professional series chainsaw that works as hard as you do. Setting the standard in outdoor power equipment trusted by professionals around the world. And to make things better, we're introducing our extended living and consumer warranty. Find the Husqvarna Chainsaw that's right for you at Liberty Lawn and Saw in West Richland. For over 49 years, Shelby's Floral has been your homegrown neighbor, bringing joy and beauty to every occasion. We're more than just a flower shop and specialize in beautiful custom arrangements, live plants, silk florals, and home decor. Our experienced designers are here to help you with all your floral needs, ensuring that every bouquet is as special as the moment it celebrates. Visit us today at our brand new location on Clearwater in Kennewick. We're part of your community and can't wait to help you celebrate life's moments. Shelby's Floral. If there's one thing we like, it's choices. And your Ford dealer is the place to start. Get power and capability with gas, hybrid, or all electric. But more important than the power you choose is what you choose to do with it. Apple Valley News Now, the official television home of the Seattle Kraken. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colberth. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. We continue to take a look at this live, beautiful look at the Columbia River coming courtesy of the Legends Casino and Hotel. Just a little bit of light haze up in the sky for this morning. Air quality reductions will not be a big issue for today, tonight, or tomorrow. Temperatures right now into the 40s and 50s, 41 in Sunnyside, 42 in Yakima, 45 for the Tri-City. So all of us need some sort of layer as you're headed out the front door. But a little bit later today, it's obviously going to be t-shirt weather. Temperatures are going to be in the 80s. We'll have plenty of sunshine. It's going to be seasonal. And also there will be a little bit more of that light haze up in the sky for the blues, for the foothills, and for the lower Columbia Basin. But again, no significant reductions in air quality expected. Then for tonight, skies will stay clear. Overnight lows dropping off into the 50s will be a little bit milder compared to some of the temperatures that we're experiencing for this morning. Today's going to be the last seasonal day we're going to have in a while as we turn super seasonal into the next six to seven days with all of this crescendoing on Sunday. We'll be up around 100 degrees in the Tri-Cities, which means we're going to be about 10 to 15 degrees above average for this time of the year. Very hot stuff, a little bit cooler into Labor Day proper, but not by much. And Keep that in mind when you look at this. Little thunderstorm chances that we'll have for Labor Day and the day after Labor Day, mainly up in the Blue Mountains. And when you think about all the hot and dry weather that we're going to have in the run-up to this, vegetation is going to be pretty dry. So there will be that potential for fires to start. We'll, we'll keep tabs on that pretty closely. Here's a seven-day forecast for the Tri-City. Sunny and seasonal with light haze for today. Maybe warming up to around 100 by Sunday. Then for Yakima, our last day of 80s for a while is going to be for today, and then we'll be up into the mid 80s for Labor, excuse me, mid 90s, obviously, for Labor Day weekend. Then for Ellensburg, we'll also see mid 90s for the weekend. Breezy with very dry vegetation for Monday and Tuesday. And then for Hermiston, light haze drifting in for today with sunny and seasonal weather otherwise. Very toasty for Saturday and Sunday, but cooler by Labor Day. And then for Walla Walla, highs climbing into the mid-90s for the holiday weekend, back into the 80s by Tuesday with a small shower chance. Now let's head out to New York City to see what's ahead on Good Morning America. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, the urgent warning about your car key fob. Benjamin Bragg Reynolds ran out to start his car on a cold winter evening in Washington, D.C. Went into the house to get the dog. When I turned around to come back out, the car was gone but he had taken the key fob inside with him. I was under the impression 
that you can start it and walk away from it, but it won't move unless the key is in the vehicle. We see just how quickly it can happen. So here's the issue. I'm going to leave this car running. I have the key fob with me. Officer Watson's going to come in here. She doesn't have the key fob. She's going to put the car into gear and she's going to be able to drive right off again. I still have the key. We follow her as she drives through a neighborhood and down busy DC streets, all without the key fob. And coming up at 7 a.m., we're going to tell you what tips police have for you. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Introducing Allison's Black Psoriasis. She thinks her flaky gray patches are all people see. Otesla is the number one prescribed pill to treat black psoriasis. Otesla can help you get clearer skin and reduce itching and flaking with no routine blood tests required. Doctors have been prescribing Otesla for over a decade. Otesla is also approved to treat psoriatic arthritis. Don't use Otesla if you're allergic to it. Serious allergic reactions can happen. Otesla may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Some people taking Otesla had depression, suicidal thoughts, or weight loss. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. With clear skin, girls' day out is a good day out. Live in the moment. Ask your doctor about Otesla. Now, the morning sprint. Time is now 6.50. It's time for your 6 o'clock morning sprint. We're going to start off in your national headlines. The FBI re releases new details about the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump at the rally in Pennsylvania. Officials say Thomas Crook's search history says he searched, quote, how far was Oswald from Kennedy, also how to make a bomb from fertilizer, and how do remote detonators work? Officials released pictures of two IEDs found in his car and that he had been researching IEDs since 2019. Also, the FBI says Crooks had more than 60 searches on both Democratic and Republican campaign events. The U.S. Supreme Court declined to lift the block on President Biden's student loan repayment plan. The SAVE plan aims to slash monthly payments and quicken the path to loan forgiveness. This comes after lower courts blocked it this summer in a legal challenge brought by GOP-led states. The order has no immediate impact on the 8 million borrowers currently enrolled in the program. The Labor Day travel period begins today. TSA is expected to screen a record-breaking 17 million people through September 4th. TSA is reminding travelers to arrive extra early for domestic and international flights. In recent weeks, average gas prices have hovered around $3.50 a gallon. And according to AAA, domestic travel over the Labor Day weekend is forecasted to be up 9% compared to last year. United Airlines flight attendants could be walking off the job after an overwhelming majority voted yesterday to authorize a strike. That's if their contract negotiations continue to hit a dead end through November. The Association of Flight Attendants say the move to vote on a strike was fueled by United's lack of negotiating in good faith. The union members have been working with an amended contract that expired in 2021. In your health headlines, the CDC has issued another warning about the listeria outbreak from Boar's Head Deli Meat. So far, at least nine people have died from the contaminated meat. There are also 57 confirmed listeria-linked illnesses in 18 states. Back in July, Boar's Head recalled more than 7 million pounds of its ready-to-eat liverwurst and other meats like ham, bologna, sausage, and roasted bacon. Boar's Head says it is intensely investigating what the root cause is. In your sports news this morning, the Seattle Mariners wrapped up their series with the Tampa Bay Rays with a win. It was all tied up after the second inning, but the Mariners came out swinging in the fifth, scoring four runs. The final score, 6-2 to two for the Mariners, Seattle winning its series two games to one. The Mariners are currently second in the AL West, and they'll be taking on the Angels in L.A. tomorrow night. The competition begins today for the 4,400 athletes competing in the 2024 Paralympic Games. The opening ceremony was held yesterday, and for the first time in history, the event was held outside of a stadium. 168 delegations took part in the celebration. The game will feature 549 medal events over 11 days. 
Football season is kicking off and practice is something many players can't get enough of. Meet the Seeker, this robotic system that can help players get in more reps in less time. Several universities are already using this technology. A Chicago-based company says it transforms how athletes train by emulating passes, kicks and punts from anywhere on the field. It enables athletes to train by themselves for the first time. Now here are the top five local things you need to know this morning. The city of Pasco can move forward on its capital improvements plan with a little more insight from the community. The city held its final open house on the plan last night. The capital improvements plan details the changes and new things coming to Pasco in 2025 to the year 2030 and it details everything from city infrastructure to future investments. The Benton Franklin Health District has sent out a community survey for residents impacted by the Lineage Fire. The survey is in response to concerns raised by residents at the Lineage Logistics Fire Town Hall meeting held in Finley back in May. Officials say the purpose is to gather data on the health impacts experienced by those living within a one mile radius of the Lineage Logistics Warehouse. The man accused of killing four University of Idaho students in 2022 will be back in court this morning. Brian Koberger's attorney will try to convince the judge to move the trial to Ada County, while prosecutors will try to convince the judge to keep the trial in Moscow. Koberger's lead attorney is adamant that an impartial jury does not exist in Moscow. The Richland School District is doing construction at 11 schools, all focused on safety and security. This follows the capital project's levy passed by RSD voters in February 2023. Construction crews have been working evenings and weekends to prepare for the students' return to schools. Coming up this week, we head to one of those construction sites to see some of the progress. Yakima's Triumph Treatment Center is holding its 8th annual International Overdose Awareness Day event tomorrow. Organizers say 96 people died of an overdose last year in Yakima County. The event features speakers who have experienced overdose, lost friends and or family, and those working to help save lives. The event is free and will run from 10 to 2 at Sarge Hubbard Park. Now we told you the 2024 Summer Paralympics began in Paris yesterday, but a British athlete who won a bronze medal at the Beijing Paralympics is reaching for the stars. John McFall, a Paralympian turned astronaut, could soon be the first disabled person to go into space. He credits the Paralympics with helping challenge preconceptions of what disabled people can achieve. A motorcycle accident caused him to have his right leg amputated when he was only 19 years old. McFall learned to run again and became a professional track and field athlete. He won a bronze medal in the 2008 Beijing Paralympics and later began working as a trauma and orthopedic surgeon. McFall points to the Paralympics as an example of how sports can change societal perceptions of disabled people. How inspiring. That Go is very inspiring. Yeah, we've got to check out the Paralympics. I yeah. think it'll be really good. And Josh, can you inspire us with some good news about better temperatures? Josh is always inspiring us with Oh, that. guys, thank you. Well, no, I mean, if you're going to feel inspired by cooler temperatures, then you're not going to feel necessarily inspired by this forecast. Now, for now, it is cool out there, 40s and 50s. You, you'll definitely need a jacket, but a little bit later today will be in the 80s. This is more typical late August weather. Remember yesterday, we were very below average, more seasonal stuff for today with plenty of sunshine. And then here we go, folks, back up to near tree. Triple digit heat in Tri Cities for Sunday, a little bit cooler for Labor Day, not by much. And we're also tracking those little thunderstorm chances for Labor Day and the day after. That was my face for the high temperatures coming back. <gasps> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching Good Morning Northwest. You can always find the latest updates on our website, AppleValleyNewsNow.com. Good Morning America is up next, and we'll be back with your local news and weather tonight at 5. Have a great day.